One fateful day in 1943, soon after my fifth birthday, my mother signed me into Hunters Bar County Primary in Sheffield. My first day at school marked the transition between play and formal learning. No one agonised too much about how I felt, but now this transition happens somewhere between nursery, reception and year one. Smoothing the shift from largely play and reception to the more structured curriculum of Key Stage 1 is the subject of hot new research from the National Foundation for Educational Research. What we found was that children were looking forward to the transition to Year 1, but there were also some concerns that they had. And one of the concerns was about the workload that they would face in Year 1. In reception, we only got to play, and in um, Year 1, we always have to work a lot. What skills were necessary for a child to make a successful transition? In the foundation stage, the expectation is that children will be involved in a lot of play activities where they do a lot of choosing for themselves. But in year one, the teacher will expect them to do more formal learning academic activities. So what were the report's main recommendations to help teachers settle the early years learners? Our main recommendations were that the whole school should view transition as a process rather than an event and also that they should involve the parents and the children and all of the staff. In Worthing, parent involvement is stressed by year leader Faith Goodger. Many parents have come up and said, oh, my child was feeling very, very anxious about coming to year one because they viewed it as a whole different world to reception. However, the way that we have integrated it so well with the reception team and communicated with the reception team, it has run smoothly and the children have realised that there's really nothing to fear. There's been recent hot research on transition from primary to secondary. Again, continuity was seen as extremely important. NFER's Kate Ridley co-authored the report. The main suggestion for things that could have been done more successfully was a greater level of cross-phase communication between the primary schools and the secondary schools. So this ranged from information about how the pupils performed, qualitative information about them as individuals, and also information for primary school teachers so they could give a little bit more detail to their pupils. But what expectations do children have? I'm just scared um, that I won't make friends there. I may be left out. I'm not really worried about anything. Except sets. What would worry me is that getting bullied. If I don't get into the school I want, I'll be sad, and that's what I'm scared of. As a Year 6 teacher at Charles Dickens Primary School, we uh, take part in a lot of activities, prepare a lot of activities which enable children to move smoothly from Year 6 to Year 7. We set up lots of circle time activities. We also plan plenty of group work activities so that the children can problem solve together and some secondary schools will invite them to visit a morning to take part in a lesson and to get a feel of their new environment before starting in September. Both NFER reports involved asking pupils about how they found the transition. And this is probably one of the greatest changes in educational research in the past 50 years. Increasingly, the voice of the child is informing good practice. Had any researcher asked me in 1943 whether I feared Hitler or my class teacher more, I could have given them the answer immediately, so long as my teacher's ruler was not in evidence. Goodbye. <laughs>